last installment of the Rosie Parks update, shipwrights were beginning work on Rosie's doghouse, having just completed all of the decking work. Apprentices used half-inch galvanized rods to tie together the Douglas fir strakes of the doghouse. A strake is an individual board or system of boards that compose the side of the doghouse. The rough openings of the window and companionway hatch are formed into the sides rather than cut afterward. The individual cabin side strakes meet at the corners with a half lap joint. A portion of each strake is removed to interlock with the remaining portion of the other strake similar to a dovetail joint. This builds strength and stability into the cabin's design. Similar to the forward hatch, an oak ledger is attached to the cabin sides for deck beam bearing and mortised with carlin notches. Volunteer Cliff inspects while shipwright apprentice Shane marks for a carlin. Carlins are the short beams that run perpendicularly to the cambered deck beams. With the beams, carlins, and vertical corner posts at the companionway in place, the shipwrights were ready to install the cabin top strakes. Here, several strakes on each side are tapered to form the trapezoidal shape of the cabin top. The cabin top is then sealed with two coats of wood sealer and protected for the winter prior to spring painting. The shipwrights then turn their attention to Rosie's monkey rails. The monkey rail is the low railing around the aft half of the boat. The shipwrights created a pattern of the existing log rail before beginning construction. Here, spacer blocks hold up the monkey rail six inches off the log rail, allowing for the drilling and installation of half-inch galvanized rods with clench rings. The rod is then peened over, creating a head that fits into an indentation in the clench ring, effectively creating a homemade bolt. Shipwright apprentice Shane drills through the monkey rail and the log rail and then the rod is driven through the clench ring and into a piece of three quarter inch pipe. After the spacer blocks are removed, the pipe holds the monkey rail off of the log rail. The monkey rails are now completed and the crew is focusing their attention on Rosie's rudder and the companionway hatch. Here is a shot of a galvanized steel rudder gudgeon looking up through the shaft hole in the transom. The rudder is equipped with a pintle that fits into the hole in the gudgeon. The top of the rudder is attached to and supported by the steering gear tucked away in the gearbox on deck. In order to attach the new rudder, a backhoe was necessary to dig a hole in the hard frozen ground to accommodate the rudder shaft. Shipwrights lower the rudder into the ground and prepare to attach it to the Rosie. The installation of the rudder is now complete. The shipwrights then began to fabricate the companionway hatch. White oak was milled for the rails and miniature beams were cut and dry fit. The cabin top is taped for gluing and the rails are set into place. Evenly spaced galvanized lag screws are drilled through the cabin top and into the deck beams below to secure it into place. Here, shipwright apprentice Shane chisels out a mortise in the cabin top's corner post which has been left long for this purpose. The curved cap rail will then fit into place. The cap rail is the piece of wood that captures the hatch itself as it slides back and forth. Here's a view of the new companionway from the front and the back. Next, the crew spent a few months sanding and painting. For the doghouse, all of the previously varnished portions were taped and the top was painted using the roll and tip technique common to the marine industry. Each coat of paint on the rosy is hand sanded with 80 grit paper. In all, there will be four coats of paint above the rub rail. Up next, the crew will be working on Rosie's bottom planks, the centerboard construction, and the rigging. For more information, find us on Facebook, read our blog, or visit our website. And don't forget to mark your calendars for Saturday, November 2nd. The Rosie Parks is set to be launched at the Chesapeake Bay Maritime Museum's annual Oyster Fest.